There are groups and individuals in Canada who claim that people can lawfully refuse to pay taxes or file a tax return. Others try to cash in on misunderstandings about tax laws. In this video, I will explain the basics of Canadian taxes and by the end of this video, you will have a greater understanding of what Canadian taxes are all about. The purpose of taxes is to finance government activities. As citizens, we expect the government to provide services such as police and fire protection, schools, road maintenance, parks and libraries, and safety inspection of food, drugs, and other products. Who must file taxes? All residents of Canada must file a federal income tax return for any year in which they have a balance of taxes owing. A resident is considered to be anyone living in Canada, but includes non-Canadians who are present for at least 183 days or more. Canadian residents are taxed on their worldwide income. Taxes paid to a foreign government can be offset by a foreign tax credit that helps eliminate potential double taxation of foreign income. The federal government also taxes non-residents of Canada on certain income earned from Canadian sources, such as investment income. Even if you have no income to report, you want to still file a tax return so you can claim the GST and HST rebate. Your province of residency as of December 31st of the taxation year is what determines which provincial income tax return you're required to file. However, Quebec is the only province that does not use the federal system of personal taxation. So, its residents must file both a federal tax return and a separate Quebec tax return. I would recommend that if you are filing a return in Quebec, um, you know, pardon my, my French, uh, you want to contact the Minister du Revenu du Quebec for further information. All other provinces and territories apply a tax on income system that permits the province to decide its own tax rates to be applied to taxable income, as well as different non-refundable and refundable tax credits. We pay a sales tax on many of our purchases. For example, 5% federal goods and services tax, commonly referred to as a GST. Provinces also charge an additional sales tax, with the exception of Alberta. In most provinces, federal and provincial sales tax have been harmonized into a single tax referred to as the harmonized sales tax, which is the HST. Ontario has an HST of 13% and PEI has an HST rate of 15%. An important point to note here is that low income individuals can have a portion of their HST and GST and provincial sales taxes that they have paid on certain goods and services that include most food items and prescription drugs refunded. An interesting thing to note here is that there's also another tax in addition to the sales tax called an excise tax, which is imposed by the federal and provincial governments on specific goods and services at purchase. Some things that this tax includes are gas, cigarettes, alcoholic beverages, tires, air travel, and telephone services. Another way that we pay taxes is on property. Real estate property taxes is a major source of revenue for local governments. Uh, this tax is based on assessed value of land and buildings. When you're a homeowner, property taxes is definitely a concern. But when you're retired on a fixed income, if your property taxes increase too rapidly, you may encounter financial difficulties. Other property that the provincial or municipal governments can assess taxes on includes the value of automobiles, boats, furniture, and farm equipment. Another area that we pay taxes is on wealth. Currently, the government imposes a tax on the increase in an individual's wealth, and this is called a capital gains tax. The increase in value of any capital asset that is realized as the at the time of sale or transfer is subject to a capital gains tax. There are some exceptions on paying capital gains, however, and these involve transfers to spouses and financially dependent or disabled children. 50% of capital gains 
um, net of any capital losses are taxable in the year uh, that they uh, were incurred. Some interesting things to note is the sale of an asset such as a stock or a bond can trigger a capital gain and loss. Transferring ownership of an asset through a gift or inheritance can also trigger a capital gains and losses. The federal government and uh, provincial governments do not impose estate or inheritance taxes. However, there is still deemed a disposition of all capital property at the time of death. This just means that income or capital gains that are made after the person's death will usually be considered to be income of the person's estate. Usually someone who owns property will have a personal representative to handle their financial affairs, and they would pay the taxes on this income with money from the estate. The executor of the estate must file a terminal income tax return for the deceased and include the deemed disposition of all assets. And this is, is why um, an inheritance passed on to heirs other than a spouse are received after tax. Another way that we are taxed is on our earnings. Canadians are taxed on most forms of income. Employers are required to deduct amounts for Canada pension plan and employment insurance in addition to withholding tax for paychecks. Individuals with other sources of income, such as net business income or investment income, may be required to make quarterly installments. Other income is also retirement income from corporate pension plans and RRSPs. Or payments from government plans, such as the Canada Pension Plan, Employment Insurance, and Old Age Security. Taxable income means your net amount of income after allowable deductions on which tax is computed. What income is not subject to income tax? Lottery winnings, gifts, inheritances, most child support payments, but it's still included on line 12799 of your T1 income tax and benefit return. The GST HST rebate, the Canada child tax benefit, scholarships, fellowships, and bursaries. As a student, if you are enrolled in a program that entitles you to claim the education amount, you don't need to report scholarships, fellowships, and bursaries as income. If you are not eligible for the education part amount, then you need to report part of the scholarships, fellowships, or bursaries that is more than $500. Owning a home is one of the best tax shelters in Canada because any capital gains realized upon its sale is exempt from capital gains tax as long as it qualifies as your principal resident. The residence can be a house, condominium, a share in a cooperative housing corporation, or summer cottage. It also includes the value of land up to one half hectare. How to reduce the amount of taxes you pay through tax credits and tax deductions. Tax deductions reduce your taxable income. And some of these tax deductions include moving expenses, employment expenses, annual professional or union dues, and RRSP deductions. Tax credits reduce your taxes payable. They are taken away from the taxes you owe and can even result in a refund. There's two types of tax credits, non-refundable tax credits and refundable tax credits. Non-refundable tax credits reduce the amount of taxes you owe if you owe money at tax time. It's good to know that it reduces taxes but does not result in a refund. If your non-refundable credits add up to more than the tax amount, then you will not receive a refund for the difference. Common types of credits include medical expenses, tax credit, charity donations, tax credit, disability tax credit, Canada Caregiver Credit. Refundable tax credits may give you a tax refund if they add up to more than the taxes you owe, but to claim them, you must file a tax return. Examples of refundable tax credits include the Climate Action Incentive, Canada Workers' Benefit, and Ontario Child Care Tax Credit how to get money back that goes largely unclaimed. Tax benefits are for Canadians who meet certain income criteria, but you need to file your taxes in order to claim these. Benefits are generally paid to people several times throughout the year after your taxes have been filed. 
Common tax benefits are the GST HST credit, the Canada Child Benefit, and the Ontario Trillium Benefit. I will not go into much details in this video, but I will include a link to a video I have done that helps Canadians learn more about the benefits they are eligible for and the billions that go unclaimed each year by those who don't file their taxes. This is why filing your taxes is critical to boosting your income. If you meet the tax benefits requirements. If you don't file your taxes, you're simply leaving money on the table. I hope this video succeeded in helping you learn more about the basics of Canadian taxes. Please let me know what you thought about the video in the comment section below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of this helpful content going forward. Thanks for watching. See you in my next one. Subscribe now.